as we've always heard, it's a great day in South Carolina. It's a great day at the University of South Carolina. So I'd like to welcome everyone today. Uh, this is an exciting event. Uh, we have some, of course, some very good speakers, and we'll go through what we're going to be doing with Siemens and other companies and beyond. So first, I would like to extend my, a warm welcome to Governor McMaster for spending time today and coming, and Raj Batra, who's president of Siemens Digital Factory Division, U.S. And of course, everyone knows uh, our president, Dr. Pastides. Uh, and of course, if you don't know, uh, Dean Hodgerary, Hossein Hodgerary, who's been with us about 18 months, and he is a game changer, and he's doing some visionary things in our College of Engineering and Computing, and we're excited to have it from UVA. Thank you, Hossein. So I'd like to also acknowledge our board, board of trustee members. I can't really see, so I'll just say, Welcome, Board of Trustee members. I see our Secretary, Tommy Colefield, and our President of our Student Body. Also, elected officials. I see a number of them, and I just say thank you for coming, uh, Mayor Benjamin. I'd also say that there's, there's people here from the university leadership, Ed Walton, and, and our Provost Joan Gable. I really appreciate you coming, and, and we greatly appreciate your support and as we put these type of partnerships together. I'd also like to thank Bob Quinn. I saw Bob. He's the tallest guy in the room. He's just sitting down today. Uh, Bob, thank you so much for your leadership at SCRA. You're reinventing it, and we greatly appreciate that, and also the UCR facility. If I can, I'd like to take a couple minutes and kind of take you where, how we got here today. And it's been a four-year adventure with Dr. Pastides. We have his visionary leadership, we created the Office of Economic Engagement with the ambition to create an entity that understands corporate relationships, from the initial engagement through negotiations and the delivery of substantial partnerships like we're announcing today. The main focus was and will always be to enhance our students' educational experience here at the university, focus on research innovation, and as Howard West would say, workforce development. And I'm not sure where Howard is, but we keep saying that over and over again with our Siemens colleagues. Uh, our whole thing is intent, intent to prepare our students to be difference, make, difference makers and their future job fields. President Bastides and, and Ed Walton, our Chief Operating Officer, requested that a creative, sometimes intense entrepreneur, which by the way, that might be me from the last four years, join their leadership team in the creation of Office of Economic Engagement. I like to call that OEE passionately. That's what we, we've defined it. And OEE is just one thing. All we do is make, have the intent and make it easy for companies like Siemens to do business and strategic partnerships with the university. Just to give you a brief 30 seconds about the Office of Economic Engagement, we have four distinct areas that we work on. One is corporate relationships. We're the portal into the university. I'd also say the U U Technology Commercialization Office led by Chad Hardaway and Tiffany Beverly, and their focus is houses all at USC intellectual property and licensing, entrepreneurship, internal and external, and our USC Columbia Technology Incubator, which our chairman, Don Tom, is here today and also the InnoVista Research Campus, which is where you're sitting today, and we're very proud of that. Our, our Office of Economic Engagement has done a number of strategic partnerships. If you'll bear with me, I'd like to highlight two before we get to the Siemens announcement. We announced a strategic partnership with IBM a couple years ago. Most of y'all were there. Uh, the creation of the IBM Center for Applied Innovation and Advanced Analytics. I think Andy Bernadine is here. Andy's retired into this month from IBM, and. I, if he's not here, I just want to thank Andy publicly for all his leadership and support, and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. This partnership includes an application management delivery center, which continues to grow, we're happy to say, and the Watson Internet of Things, or IoT Center. Our center is a partner with IBM's IoT Worldwide Headquarters in Munich, Germany. But here at USC, we're currently focused on smart manufacturing, is why we're here today, along with healthcare. I want to acknowledge a couple and thank a couple of IBM executives. The first one is Dave Miller uh, in the back. Dave is actually the global general manager, global industrial sector for IBM. So he, he actually runs all of IBM, I'll say, Dave, just for today. Don't tell Jenny Rometty that as CEO, but he runs all of IBM. Mark Easton, who's vice president of industry and solutions and business development, is here today. And I want to specifically call out one person, that's John Ward. And I'm not sure where John is. I'm not going to make you come up, John. John's short. He needs to walk up. But if it wasn't for John Ward, we would not be sitting here today. John brought Siemens to us through John Billings, a former vice president. 
And from that, we are here today to announce this nine months worth of work with Howard West to announce an exciting partnership. Oh, and by the way, just to let y'all know, we're not just resting on our laurels, myself and the president. This morning, Dr. Pastiz and myself had uh, breakfast with John, with Dave Miller, and Hossein Hashirari, and we already reviewed an, reviewed an additional investment, and we thank you for that, Dave, into our Smart Manufacturing Innovation Lab here at USC. So uh, I'm gonna hold that for the reporters. That'll come later. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out when Dave would like to do that. Um, we also announced in this room, it was flipped. We were on that side, a partnership with Boeing a couple years ago. The University of South Carolina is one of just 13 strategic partners with Boeing Company. The announcement was uh, Boeing's $5 million research investment into the McNair Center of Aerospace and Innovation in research. Uh, I think there's a couple of Boeing execs here, Dan Mooney, and uh, I thank Dan Mooney and Ray Healy for their leadership. Uh, I'm happy to report, more happy to report from my president, because he'll ask me the questions, but our research partnership is continuing to grow, and we're actually now looking at expanding into other areas. So it's very good news. So why are we here today? Uh, through nine months worth of work, again, working with Howard West and Banu Thomas on their digital factory side of some equipment, we're here today to announce a $628 million technology grant. That for Thank you. And that, th this is the basic, the basis of a strategic partnership with the University of South Carolina and Siemens. And, and I have to say, this represents on a, on, a, on a grant basis, a technology grant basis, this represents one of the top three Siemens investments they made in universities in the United States. So we are very excited and we promise not to let them down. Correct, Howard? Exactly. <laughs> but this initial investment has three strategic areas that I'd like to go through briefly. One is where we're sitting today, the McNair Aerospace and Innovation Research Center. Part of this technology grant, about $160 million of it, 25% will expand McNair's research capabilities by leveraging Siemens software to improve the way composite parts are made. These capabilities will usher the next generation of materials and material designs to produce lighter, stronger, more versatile and functional land and air vehicles of the future. The second area that we're focused on is the College of Engineering and Computing. And Dean Hajerary will take you through the details, but we're really working with Siemens investment in the college that will enhance the curriculum and further prepare our students to have maximum impact in their engineering and, co and computing careers. The third part of, the, of this grant, this partnership, is around a Siemens Digital Factory Innovation Lab. This is very exciting for our students so they get hands-on experience in, in a manufacturing lab. This first-of-a-kind university-based facility will be located at McNair Center, right out the door. The lab initially will consist of three distinct factory areas, a picker robot for handling applications, a roller picker robot for pick and place applications, and a general purpose robotic controller. This is the same type of automation equipment, it's very important to realize this, this is the same type of automation equipment that are found throughout industry globally. Uh, this hardware is used to maintain the highest levels of productivity, efficiency, safety, security, flexibility, and uptime. As a result of this partnership, working with the, this type of equipment and software, our students will be able to work with this equipment every day as part of their learning, which is very exciting for, the, for, our, for our students. The Innovation Lab will increase our students' real life experience and also be an innovation focused demonstration center for industry. Our vision is that this digital factory lab will be the foundation for the state of South Carolina to become the smartest manufacturing state in the U.S., which will no doubt complement the Governor McMaster's efforts because right now we are the one of the fastest growing, top five fastest growing manufacturing states in the U.S. Uh, this asset in our, in, our, in our university will with no doubt be a true industry 4.0 leadership lab. I would like to acknowledge as I go forward our partners from SC State. I saw President Clark. President Clark and I called each other yesterday and he said, why am I not in this? And we're working on it, sir. Uh, and I, think Ron, I think President Ron Rames is here from Midlands Tech. I saw some of his folks uh, where, where this is, the next step is to have those conversations. So today our distinguished speakers will express their views on strategic partnership and the positive impact we will have here at the University of South Carolina that will lead to further impact 
to our state and our southeast region and the nation. So the first speaker, I mean, as, Bob, as Mayor Bob would say, it's pretty easy. Our president, Dr. Harris Pastides. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I'm humbled, frankly, to see so many of you, each and every one of you, a good and important friend of the university working so hard for the betterment of our state. Thank you for coming. Bill, let me uh, thank you for your seminal role in making today happen. I think we've got the best Office of Economic Engagement anywhere, and we've got the best leader. Today, and Bill said today was a great day for South Carolina and for the University of South Carolina. Let me take that one step further. Today is one of the most important days in the modern history of the University of South Carolina. It has got a factor of technology and, as Ross Lordo would say, of coolness that we have not had before. What is a digital factory? Well, every good factory in the United States is now a digital factory. What is a digital factory innovation lab? It's a place where South Carolina companies, American companies, and global companies thinking possibly about locating in South Carolina <clears throat> could come and see the world's leading software, Siemens software, the industry stan standard applied to robots, applied to other machines, applied to equipment of any kind, and see it in real time. Virtual reality, for example, uh, adaptive technologies. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the days of doing a PowerPoint and closing a big sale, they're done. People want to see in real time, in this kind of laboratory setting, what it might mean to them. Uh, we are so pleased that our graduates will have experience in the Siemens software ready to take the leading jobs in South Carolina and around the world. Because again, what workplace that uses the Siemens product wouldn't want to have engineering, computer science, music, history graduates who are already familiar with that software ready-made? These young people who work in the lab next door, in this digital, digital factory innovation lab, I think, first of all, I think Siemens is going to want them. I think Boeing is going to want them. I think IBM is going to want them. Michelin certainly will want them. And I want them too. <laughs> and they are going to have job offers from the greatest companies and uh, uh, not only in the state and around the world. So thank you to Siemens. From a faculty perspective, the faculty will be able to experiment and I hope with Siemens push the boundaries of what this software can do because young people will bring new creative ideas that even the great minds at Siemens and IBM and other great companies haven't yet thought of. That's why Siemens has come here. I'm so glad that this is the first university-based digital factory that Siemens has ever invested in. And I'm hesitant to repeat the number, except I really like the sound of <laughs> $628 million, but don't clap again, because that is, of course, it's a, it's a phenomenal number, but it's really secondary to what this will mean for the students, the faculty, the university, the city, the state, and I would say to America as well. So it is, let me say again, one of the most important announcements we've made in the modern history of the university uh, let's hear more about this from our governor and from Siemens. Thank you all very, very much. Our next speaker uh, we welcome is Raj Batra. He's president of the Digital Factory Division of Siemens USA. Raj joined Siemens in 1993, give or take, 1993, and as a held, he's been there for, he's been there a while, and has held a variety of high-level management strategy and sales positions. Raj has a background in electrical engineering, so Roger Dugal will be glad to hear that if he's here. So Raj, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Well, first, it's really a great honor and pleasure to be here today in the great state of South Carolina. So, Governor McMaster, it's a great pleasure to be here with, with you. Uh, President Pastides, uh, really um, a great pleasure to, to contribute to this great institution at the University of South Carolina. And when I think of things that are important to our, to our business overall, you know, we see customers, we see clients all over the world, but nothing has the significance that an investment like this has because this is a, a perennial uh, annuity uh, for our business. This gives back, gives back, gives back in all different forms. And uh, um, you know what these students will do with this software and this technology and digitalization will be transformative for U.S. manufacturing going forward. So uh, let me just make a few comments about digitalization too. I think it's important to put this in context what, what digitalization is. So it's really, I would say, first off, an exciting time to learn about the world of manufacturing. So the digital revolution that all of you hear about that swept through travel, music, and retail is now changing the way we design and manufacture complex products such as commercial and defense aircraft, cars, ships, medical devices, and electronics. And this is a time when the difference between a billion dollar startup and just another great idea depends on how fast you get to market. And time to market, we believe, is the biggest and most decisive factor for industries out there. You know, companies that have a first mover advantage. And whether or not you can scale. So even established companies today are feeling the challenge. More than 50%, I want you to think about this, more than 50% of the Fortune 500 has disappeared since 2000. And the main reason is digitalization and disruption. So change brings a lot of risks and also brings uh, the risk as well as rewards. And the opportunities are really enormous. McKinsey estimated that if the US fully embraced digitalization, it could, have a, it could boost GDP by up to $2.2 trillion by 2025. And the benefits of this are increased productivity, reduced downtime, better utilization of assets, and faster product releases. And think about that. One of the greatest product launches in history, uh, that individual doesn't need more orders for cars. He needs to get cars out the door uh, because he's losing uh, ground every day that they can't deliver on, on, on those vehicles. Uh, so, we regularly hear from our customers that using these powerful digital platforms enables them to reduce time to market by up to half, triple the output, simulate not only product performance, but also factory performance, reduce the time to create prototypes by up to 90%, or completely eliminate the need for prototypes um, by relying instead on what we talk about with this advanced technology and advanced software called the digital twin. And in our own operations, with almost 300 manufacturing facilities around the world in 190 countries, 60 right here in the United States, uh, we've been able to achieve quality level, levels of 99.9% .9 in the world of manufacturing. If you're in manufacturing, that's, that's you know, we use a DPM uh, acronym, and that DPM is about 11.5, which to a lot of companies is only a dream. But that isn't the factory of the future. It's the factory of today. It's smart, it's fast, it's safe, it's secure, it's efficient, and it's not gonna run itself. It's gonna need great qualified people uh, along with the technology. So a great example here is the aerospace and defense sector. Production is being streamlined at aircraft manufacturers to meet the demand for almost 35,000 commercial aircraft in the next 20 years. Time to market, as I mentioned earlier, is critical for everyone in that industry. And that's why Siemens is working very, very closely with companies like Lockheed Martin, which recently moved production of its F-16 fighter jet to Greenville, SpaceX, the United Launch Alliance, to all help them leverage digitalization throughout their operations, and it's making a difference. It's, by the way, the same technology that was used by NASA in the Jet Propulsion Laboratory to successfully simulate and test the landing of the Mars rover Curiosity for NASA's landing on Mars in 2012, so traveling you know, 100 plus million miles away and going from uh, 13,000 miles an hour to a complete stop in seven minutes and landing that just softly so it doesn't break. So that all had to be simulated because you don't have Mars here. Uh, so, so in many of, of the more than 400 aerospace related companies that call this great state of South Carolina home are getting it right. Employing advanced technologies to export approximately 5.7 billion worth of aircraft in 2016, a 47% increase from 2015, double-digit growth in employment in the state's aerospace sector, 
it's going to require a new set of skills for workers. And so today, and that culminates the reason why we're here today. So I wanted to put the context of digitalization into play. Why it's so important for, for industry, why it's so important for enterprise corporations, and why it's so critical for U.S. manufacturing to thrive, for us to be the best in the world at what we do. So today, it's with great pleasure that Siemens announces an in-kind technology grant to the University of South Carolina with a commercial value estimated at just over $628 million. And with this industrial hardware and software, students and faculty here are gonna gain hands-on experience with the same state-of-the-art design and engineering platforms that are used by leading manufacturers around the world. To be more specific, as they start using these technologies, they'll be joining the ranks of hundreds of thousands of companies with more than 15 million installed software licenses, 30 million installed uh, automation systems globally. So we are very, very committed to developing the workforce of the future, helping to close the skills gap. Manufacturing will always be about more than what we make or what we add to the nation's GDP, but our bigger value is really our ability to open doors to the middle class, to restore people's faith in the American dream, and to make U.S. manufacturing a competitive weapon. And as America becomes a force in the new high-tech digital and advanced type of manufacturing, jobs too will change even more. So with more than two million manufacturing job openings, openings that could go unfilled due to a shortage of qualified applicants, partnerships between academic institutions like the University of South Carolina and private companies like Siemens are really critical to our future. So just last week, uh, and in closing, the White House announced efforts to expand apprenticeship programs. And at Siemens, we've taken the proven German apprenticeship model and successfully deployed it in the United States, partnering with community colleges to combine skills-based curriculum with on-the-job training. This year, we're expanding that program and we'll now have apprenticeships in seven states where we have factories and plants. We've committed to investing an additional $2 billion in advanced manufacturing software for educators who are training the next generation of, of workers and workforce. And today is a great example of that commitment. So, uh, so Siemens is promoting manufacturing as a career, one filled with technology, innovation, and the ability to make a difference. And right here in South Carolina, um, we are helping BMW produce fine automobiles, not only for the United States, but for the world. Spartanburg is BMW's largest factory uh, in the world, producing 411,000 vehicles in 2016, 70% for export, making BMW the, the largest automobile export in the United States once again, something we're also very proud to, to work with them on. We also recently announced a global partnership with Michelin to optimize its industrial structures and leverage the performance of its industrial assets. So, Again, we're very, very proud to be here today, and our commitment to USC and the McNair Center is a vote of confidence in the high quality programs that this institution represents, and we look forward to working with you for many, many years to come. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Raj, and we look forward to continuing to grow our partnership and promise not let you down. How about that? So now I'm very fortunate uh, to a guy I've known a long time and as a friend, uh, introduce Honorable Henry, Governor Henry McMaster, Governor of the great state of South Carolina. Henry Dargan McMaster is the 117th Governor of South Carolina. Prior to becoming Governor, McMaster served two years as Lieutenant Governor, eight years as Attorney General, and four years as the United States uh, Attorney appointed by President Ronald Reagan. Uh, he's married to his better half, Peggy McMaster, and she was here, she'd stand up and say that, I'm sure. Uh, for them, they have two children, Governor and Mrs. McMaster are members of First Presbyterian Church here in Columbia. Governor McMaster. Thank you, Bill Kirkland. That was just fascinating listening to these men, and those citations you gave Raj Batra are really fascinating. And what I want to say to, to everybody here is, is welcome to Brain Power USA. This is the center of the universe for brain power right now. And all of these major companies around the world that Raj Batra spoke of are right here in South Carolina. I mean, everybody is coming to South Carolina, and I wish 
that you could see the people that come through my office, some as lieutenant governor, but they're lining up as governor, and they've been doing this for some time, but it's accelerating now in the last few years. They're getting faster and faster. Everybody wants to come to South Carolina because of, of the assets that we have here, the major research universities, great technical college system, which we've expanded into some wonderful programs, the air, the beaches, the mountains, all of that, plenty of stable power, and we, we really do have it all. But the main thing that they all say after we recite the reasons they're here and what they're looking for is they say it's the people. They say the people of South Carolina are different. And that's what always makes the difference in their decisions where to come. I'm just wondering, back in 1801 when South Carolina College was created and when in 1847 Werner von Siemens and his partner invented the European equivalent of the telegraph, I just wonder if they could see what we would be doing today, how far we would go, if it would be within their imagination. What I believe is right now today, because of this magnificent collaboration between this great university and this great company, we also today cannot possibly see, cannot imagine the results, the impact that this is going to have not only on the future of our state, but on the future of our country. It is a great partnership. And everywhere I go, I've been to a lot of places lately, meeting with a, a lot of businesses from around the world. And in fact, we were, I was up in Maryland just uh, on Monday to a conference sponsored by the U.S. Department of Commerce. And Secretary Wilbur Ross was there. There were 3,000 businesses represented, 1,200 of them from, were from overseas somewhere, foreign. And what Wilbur Ross said at a press conference was that South Carolina is the model for innovation, for uh, new ideas and progress in the country. And I think that what we're doing today, this collaboration that's taking place today, is proof of that. With this Siemens technology, can you imagine a student trying to decide where to go to school that's interested in engineering, that's interested in technology? And they say, well, at the University of South Carolina, in South Carolina, there is a school that has the most up-to-date, the most innovative technology combining uh, the new world of nanotechnology and, and data information in the whole world is in South Carolina. Now, where do you think that student is going to want to go? We'll be able to bring people here, and we will have these exciting young minds with proper supervision and encouragement working with the, the technology and innovation of a company that has enormous capacity all over the world. And so what happens when you combine that? What happens when you combine innovation, youthful energy, high knowledge, high intelligence with encouragement and the latest and the best, best kind of technology? You get, a, you get an explosion of imagination, innovation, and growth and we release brain power, and ladies and gentlemen, that's where the future is. It's not in anything else. And in a lot of these, in all of these plants and factories that I've been into lately, some of which have been mentioned in others, they all say the same thing. They say they're technicians, they're workers, they don't come anymore carrying toolboxes. They come with laptops. The world's changed. We have a whole new kind of job skills out there, and they pay well, they're highly sophisticated, and it's this kind of collaboration that's going to take us to the future. This is day one of a great, great future. It's built on a great accomplishments over the years of the University of South Carolina and, and great people that are, that are in, in this room. But in the words of, finally, the words of that wonderful philosopher, Frank Sinatra, also a song singer, the best is yet to come, and it's coming fast, and thank you.